Okay, so now that we can tell, we can look at a pair of things and know if they're conjugates, um, if they're different just by one H, we can also look at reactions that are between a weak acid and a weak base um, and identify some conjugate pairs. So if you're given a reaction like this one, the first thing we want to do is look for something that looks like a conjugate pair, something weak and something that's just like it but has exactly one more or one less H+. Plus. So my first thing I'm going to do is identify the fact that this, the HSO4 minus and the SO4 minus 2, that's a pair, an acid-base pair. Um, why? All that's different about them is this one has one more H+, plus, right? Its charge is one higher, a little more positive, and it has one more hydrogen than this one. So that is an acid-base pair, a conjugate pair. Within that pair, we can identify which one's the acid and the base because we know that whichever one has the extra H is an acid. The one missing the H is the base. Um, you should also have another acid-base pair for looking at a reaction like this. CO3 minus 2 and HCO3 minus. Um, all that's different about them is this one has one more H than that one. Um, its charge is one higher because it gained an H+. Plus. So the one with the extra H is the acid. The one missing the H is the base. Going back to that Bronsted-Lowry definition, this should make sense, right? We learned in the Bronsted-Lowry definition that acids lose H+. Plus. We called this an acid. Over the course of the reaction, does it lose H+. Plus? Yes. After the reaction's done, it now doesn't have that H anymore. According to the Bronsted-Lowry definition, we know that bases gain H+. Plus. So this was our base on the left-hand side. Over the course of the reaction, ah, it gained an H+. Plus. What's actually happening here is this acid is losing an H, this base is gaining that H, and we end up with two acid-base pairs. So you should always have an acid and a base on one side, the order does not matter, and an acid and a base on the other side, the order does not matter. Um, again, identify your pairs first, then it should make sense by the time you're done. So here's one more example for you, because you might think it's weird that water is here. Um, we've always said water is neutral. But actually, by the Bronsted-Lowry definition, water can act as an acid or as a base, right? It can gain an H or lose an H, making it an acid or a base. So, in fact, let's look at that. Water's conjugate would be something with one more or less H+. Plus. Water is HOH. If I take an H off of that, I have OH-. minus. So this actually is an acid-base pair. The water has the extra H comparatively, so in this case it's acting as an acid, and my OH minus, not surprisingly, is acting as my base. Now, I always will have a second pair in a reaction like this. NH3 and NH4, good, that's a conjugate pair. They're different only by one H. This has the extra H, so it's my acid. This is missing the H comparatively, so it is my base. Double checking, I have an acid and a base on each side. Um, and you'll see here the order that they're written in doesn't matter, acid or base, acid or base. Um, okay, go identify some acid-base pairs in reactions.